by the News Journal and Daytona State College. I'm Pat Rice, editor of the News Journal, and I'll be your moderator tonight. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come. I, I really didn't think we would have this many people, but uh, give yourselves all a hand for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I also I apologize while I'm uh, speaking here for kind of showing some of you my back end. That wasn't my intention. Uh, we thought that it would just be this many people and it sort of grew. Um, uh, I want to give a couple of thanks as we get started. First, I want to thank the City of New Smyrna Beach for allowing us to use the Brandon Center for this debate. It's a great place for a debate uh, uh, right along the, the river and it's, it's just a beautiful sight. Uh, I also want to thank Daytona State College uh, for helping on this debate as well as a debate uh, tomorrow night at the News Journal Center in downtown Daytona Beach, a mayoral election, and also in Flagler County next week Tuesday, the Flagler uh, County Sheriff's debate. Uh, the, uh, so I want to thank them. Uh, I don't know where Robert is right now, Robert Grimm, but uh, he's been a great help to me. Thank you very much, Robert. Okay. And if you don't have your college education, there's still time. <laughs> um, now, just a couple things before we get started. Uh, first, if you have a cell phone, uh, please turn it off. That way we won't be interrupted by Inagata DeVita or some rainbow like that. Um, a couple of uh, ground rules for the audience. In a minute, I'm going to introduce the candidates, and I encourage you to applaud each of them as they're introduced. And at the end of the debate, each candidate will have a couple minutes for closing remarks. And I hope that you'll applaud all of them for their closing remarks as well. In between their introductions and their closing remarks, your job here is to listen and stay silent. It's up to the candidates to convince you whether you should vote for them or not. And they really don't need additional help from the audience. So please, uh, be good attentive uh, listeners. Uh, finally, if you need to get up for the debate uh, for any reason, or uh, please do so, uh, but do so as quietly as possible. And I'd appreciate that. So with that, let's get started with the introductions. A businessman from Daytona Beach. The second candidate is Nancy Epps, a former mayor of Ponce Inlet. And the final candidate in District 2 is Josh Wagner, an attorney and the current District 2 incumbent. Now to the District 3 candidates. Uh, the first candidate is Deb Dennis, a former Volusia County School Board member. The second candidate is Jim Hathaway, a New Smyrna Beach City Commissioner. And the third candidate is Justin Kennedy, an Edgewater City Council member. Uh, Candidates, in recent years, all three tourism boards have had their share of controversy. Meanwhile, tourism growth in the county has been relatively flat. As a county council member, what would you do to change the way our tourism boards spend their estimated 70, or seven rather, million dollars a year in bed taxes? And would you consider consolidating the three boards into a single entity? The answer is no. I would not consolidate the three entities into a single uh, three units into a single entity. The reason being, it was created at state level. You'd have to have the state legislature come together and uh, take that and, and change that to the local bill. And most likely, it would have to come from the local delegation to bring that bill forward. So I would not uh, be in favor of that. However, there is a need for more oversight. Obviously, that, that's pretty common sense. We, we need to vet. Who sits on those boards? We need to bet who is going to be the director. We need to set certain salary guidelines for those directors. We also need to determine what is the best methodology to have uh, uh, the three units 
working with like an umbrella. You have the county perhaps have an oversight of all the dollars and cents, but the local entities actually make the decision on how those dollars are spent. I think personally, we need to go back to the days when we used to go after the, the Germans, when we used to go after the Canadians and all the Europeans and bring them back and forth to the, to the Daytona Airport. I thought it was a great venue. We had a lot of people, a lot of them came to New Smyrna Beach and enjoyed our beach and our, our community. And I think that's one method we could go to to determine how to bring our, our tourists back. And I, I would hope that that would be something we could actually do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Justin, good question to you. <coughs> well, I believe Mr. Hathaway is correct on the state rules. Um, and I would agree that each, sorry about that, um, each community deserves its own advertising authority. And for the reason being, we're each selling a different product. Um, yes, the east, uh, excuse me, the southeast and the northeast are selling beach vacations. The west is selling a different product, whether it's nature trails, biking, Stetson University, and all the things that they have to offer. So would it make sense to have one big umbrella to advertise? I think each local uh, area needs to have say on that. But it certainly makes sense to have the county implement a written policy that, that guides everything. And it certainly makes sense to have a written policy on the qualifications of those people that serve. Regardless of their salary or their volunteer, they have to understand that they have to follow the mission of the authority and the rules of the county. Uh, Ken, the same question to you. I would leave the, the three boards as they are, because it, we can't really do anything about it as a county council. It's, it's state uh, mandated or agreed to by the, by the state legislators. Um, the county council has not overseen these boards properly over the last four years. Hence, we had all this, the scandals at the, the Har board, where one member present at the table was involved. The, the county um, duty is to oversee the budget of these boards, to only oversee their budgets. Um, there has been reports of nepotism where people were uh, appointed to these boards because they had the relationships with, with certain members of the, of, the, of the county council. And, um, each, each uh, board is individual and it has its individual area and I think we got to have a greater oversight by, by the county council and by the county management. Thank you. Nancy, the same question to you. We're sharing the microphone. Uh, I would not combine the boards even if the state agreed to do that for the reasons that have previously been stated that the three separate areas have such different markets that the boards represent that I don't think that it would be efficient as far as the actual bottom line of what they're trying to accomplish. I am not sure if everybody in the audience realizes that the taxes that are being referred to here are strictly paid by the people who stay in our rooms, their bed tax, and the reason that they call them that is because they're not related to ad valorem property taxes. So those tax dollars are directly related to tourism, and the goal of those boards is to bring more people to our community to spend money so that we have an enhanced economy. Thank you. Josh, the same question to yourself. Thank you, Pat. Yes, they're right. The state statute says what we can and cannot do. Now, that being said, we have lobbyists, and we can push our lobbyists, and as a board say, hey, we'd like to make these changes. Um, there's arguments for and against, but you know, we don't have the time. To answer your question about the director, though, we set guidelines. This present county council set guidelines to make sure there's limits to what they can do. And if you think about it, if you had one board, the guideline for the second tier, well, the HA would just pick that up. So I think functional consolidation takes place. Uh, but as far as there being a scandal in the HA, it is true. I was involved in that. Guess what? I ran four years ago with this perspective, hey, things need to be changed. There's things going on that aren't right. People see it as a scandal. You know what I see it as? Doing my job. I did what I was elected to do. I went in there. I saw something that was wrong. Hotels were being treated differently, and I had proof of it. I went in there and said, hey, these, you're not treating everyone fairly. And guess what? The director was fired. But that's why you elected me. That's what I was brought in there for. I didn't fire him, but my appointment voted for it, and so did six other people. So when people say there's a scandal, it depends on how you look at it. In my opinion, I stopped the scandal. That's what I was there to do. Thank you. Excuse me. None of that. That's right. Oh, I Listen. Thank you. Yeah. Question to you. Thank you. Uh, the whole, I think that the 
the, the real part of this question is, what is the county council's role in all three different authorities? And the, I see their role as putting the processes and procedures. At the May 17th meeting at the county council meeting, the county manager, Jim Deneen, was addressing the county council on uh, the missteps, if you want to call it that, at the Southeast Pollution Ad Authority. And he actually re uh, recommended policies and procedures. The council backed off a little bit of, of that. But here's the thing. We have uh, ad authorities making multi-million dollars with no strategic plan, no business plan. I think it is a council's responsibility to ask for a business plan with the budget, with defined and measurable goals and outcomes. We need more accountability in all ad authorities. It is a council's responsibility to implement that. Thank you. And Jim, you have a final minute to uh, respond to what others said. Well, obviously, the, the, you understand that, that each of us are pretty much in favor of not uh, bringing them all together. And you also understand, from my point of view, I think transparency is a big issue here. We're all concerned about how those dollars are collected, how those dollars are spent. And I would certainly, if I'm elected as your council, county council member in District 3, would recommend that we make these meetings available to citizenry at a time when you, the working citizen, can attend. And two, we put them in a room large enough that you can attend, not the smaller rooms that we find today. Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll go to the next question, which goes to uh, Mr. Kennedy. Volusia County's Ocean Center is operating in a deficit of about $1.3 million a year right now. What, if anything, would you do to change the way the Ocean Center operates? Okay, can you guys hear me okay? okay. The Ocean Center for years has been operating in the red. Um, there's two schools of thought. Is the Ocean Center supposed to be an enterprise that brings in revenue on the in the black for the county and thereby offsetting general fund expenses? Or is it a loss leader? Is it something that's supposed to lose money to the tune of a million and a half dollars a year to help out Daytona Beach and their tourism industry? I believe in the first method. I believe the Ocean Center can and should be operated as a business for profit. It may not make a whole lot, but it should at least sustain itself. I also believe that it does bring benefit to Daytona Beach and their hotel industry and, and all the other industries that feed off that. But the question is, does the rest of the county bear that burden? If it's operated as a loss leader for Daytona Beach and the rest of us are paying for it, I don't think that's right. And I don't think that it's fair for the rest of the county to have to subsidize the Ocean Center year in and year out. I think we need a change in direction. I say let's try privatizing it. It hasn't been done before. It hasn't been working so far. Let's try privatizing it, or at least consider privatizing parts of it in ways to just to bring it into the black, if, if nothing else. Thank you. Uh, Ken, the same question to you. <laughs> The Ocean Center um, continues to be in the red. I'm looking in terms of privatizing it. In fact, I've already contacted the Donald Trump Corporation to ask them if they're interested in, in purchasing the Ocean Center. I know in, in a, in a, on a radio um, show recently, Mr. Wagner said that um, the Ocean Center was created not to make a profit. I don't believe that government, we should be subsidizing something like the Ocean Center. It, has, it, should, it should run, it should pay for its expenses. There is a, a national glut for, for conferences, for ocean centers throughout, the, throughout North America. And we, it's, it's a cutthroat um, um, aid, uh, department or industry. And we, we gotta be able to attract people. We gotta work hard to, to market our, our area and so bring, bring the ocean center in, into the black. We cannot continue to have it being a, a a stone around the necks of the of, of the taxpayers. I'm for privatizing. Thank you, Nancy. The same question to you. Uh, it, it is an enterprise fund that the Ocean Center is was funded by, and that means it is supposed to sustain itself. It's supposed to be an, a business run by the county, so it is not supposed to go in the red. It is supposed to at least be able to break even. Obviously, there have been some problems recently. The expansion certainly added to those problems. Uh, the, the expansion that was discussed when I last ran for county council was not anywhere near as big as it ended up being, and unfortunately, I'm afraid that that's what got us into this trouble. However, we are where we are now. 
Uh, I am not really in favor of privatizing it because I do think that if it does make money, it should come to the county. But I would be in favor of, and I have been in favor of, pursuing naming rights for it so that someone who may not want to take on the burden of an ocean, a convention center when there is a glut, as was mentioned, may at least want to put their name on it and be making yearly payments to the county for that privilege, just like they do at the Speedway with all the different uh, you know, race cars and all the, all the things that you see sponsored. Thank you. John, same question to you. Yeah, well, when I was running for the county council, that decision was already made. When I took office, the grand opening was already taking place a month before. Uh, so my name's not on that building. Now, as far as supporting it, yes, it's a $1.3 million loss, but you have to look at it. And Mr. Ali said that uh, you know, I support it, you know, it needs to make money, it should lose money. No, it should break even. You need to make sure your bookings match whatever that value is, because if you're making money, you should then use that money to bring in another convention. You should never, that it should never make a profit. It should always be used, utilized to bring in a bigger group, a better group, someone who's going to bring more money into the hotels, because that's the point. The hotels and the people that come stay at the hotels pay for it. As far as privatizing it, if you privatize the bookings, which I brought up two years ago, this was before my friend Joyce Cusack was on the, on the council, we inherited it. And it's okay because the sales tax actually pays for it. You look at the equation, people that stay and people that spend money over the Hilton, they use the sales tax to help pay for the Ocean Center. Do I want it to go up? Absolutely. Have I taken steps to do it? Absolutely. The hall, the hall was part of that as well. So I think it's a... Uh, Thank you. Deborah. Yeah, <clears throat> this is a really uh, interesting issue because I listen to other uh, candidate forums too and I've heard two, two sitting council members say it was never designed to make a profit. Yep. Well, the opposite of profit is loss. So I would, I would entertain a hybrid model I don't know that we could privatize completely, but I would look at a private leasing company because profit is not a bad word. If we could get a marketing company in there, a booking company that would generate more revenue, bring more convention, more conferences in here, that's a good thing. We'd still have it, but we would have a hybrid, we'd have a, we'd have a profit, and we wouldn't be in the red. And here's the thing, we had a, a leadership vacuum for two years when they fired the executive director of the Convention and Visitor Bureau and left a vacuum there. So we're paying the price now of a two, two and a half year leadership and marketing vacuum. We're just now catching up. Thank you. Jim, same question. The, uh, the, the hall board just picked a new director, Mr. Hens. He hasn't been on board for any length of time. You need to determine, one, let him run the show. Two, see if he can provide a new direction. We have, I understand the bookings are done manually rather than electronically. I think that you know, shows you the county government really shouldn't be in this business. If you're not an expert in this particular business, you shouldn't be in it. We should be hiring people that are experts to know how to run this facility so that it does at least break even. I mean, why in the world do any of us want to put our own dollars in it when we have to pay to go into the venue? So my attitude is, let's give this gentleman a chance to run the show. Let's see how well he does in six months to, to a year. If he fails, we ought to take other measures. Thank you. And Justin, you have one more minute on that question. Well, I think, I think most of us are, are kind of saying the same thing, and, and I just would sum it up. Something has to change. We can't continue to lose money on it. What Josh is saying is if we, if we go in, into a profit situation, he's suggesting reinvesting in the Ocean Center, which makes sense. Um, we can also offset other, you know, if it can go back into the general fund perhaps, but reinvesting in it. It makes sense, but in any case, it's it's got to sustain itself. It's not fair to ask the rest of the county to subsidize it. Thank you. Now we're going to go on to another question. Can you get this question? Uh, Volusia County isn't all that large, and yet a newcomer such as myself, I moved here two and a half years ago, quickly comes to realize that the county suffers from a persistent regional factualism. This is a so-called palmetto curtain that divides the east from the west. And to a good extent, the southeast is separated from both the west and Daytona Beach area in its interest. It was sort of shown in the, the, the answer in some ways uh, to the three tourism boards. What can the next county council do to address that factionalism? Our county is too divided. The county council is out of control. 
if you look at the, the southwest part of Volusia County, 70% of the people drive over the bridge to Seminole County and Orange County to work. A lot of the development has been happening on the east side of the county. People on the west side are complaining. All we got on the west side are um, uh, parts to nowhere. You know, they, they build a, 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 walk, a walk path and it, it, it stops and then you gotta get your car and, or, or bicycle and get join the other end. We, we, need, we need a comprehensive approach to, to development in the county. I, although I'm, I'm not elected, I've, I've been involved in, in development. I, I've been talking to a couple manufacturers who want to come to Volusia County. I've had meetings with them, with, with uh, State Representative uh, Fred Costello, with uh, Congresswoman Sandy Adams, with the Lieutenant Governor, Jennifer Carroll. People who want to come here and set up business. You don't have to hold an office to get involved. And I'm getting involved. I, I hope that the voters of Volusia County District 2 will elect me to be their, their next county council member. And there are greater things in store for Volusia County if we put the right people there. The governor's office has invited me to, to go on a, an economic mission, trade mission to the Caribbean because of my knowledge down there. And we want to bring more businesses to Volusia County. We need more jobs. The county council is only concerned about keeping their jobs, not bringing jobs to Volusia County. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy, same question to you. Well, there is a, a natural geographic divide in St. John's River that does create a, a barrier that you can't do anything about. The key is to work together you have to find these little projects that you can all work together on and clearly economic development is huge for everybody in the county. It's true that some people have to drive out of the county to find work because there isn't a job for them in this county. That should not be creating division, however. That should be a goal for us to continue to work together to try to create more jobs in this county so that they can stay here and have a good job. Thank you. Josh, same question. Can I ask, the, the question seemed to have changed from when it started. Are you talking about the divide from East Volusia to West Volusia, not from Volusia County to Seminole? Correct? Yes, okay. that's correct. Um, you know, and we actually made it a little worse, honestly. We, uh, for the conservation corridor, we've actually bought a lot of land. And our development, the reason we're doing that is one, it's a good thing to do, but our development on the East and West side is gonna be tied in the future to water. If you don't have the water, you can't develop. So that's, that's one of the big issues. But as far as what we can do to answer your question, I think it's one of those things, the TPO, the Transportation Planning Organization, a couple weeks ago, uh, a couple months ago, got in a heated debate with someone from, uh, from the other side, as they say. And uh, the next time I saw him, I said a joke and said, hey, you don't have your boxing gloves. And you know, you, you gotta have that type of relationship where you can talk to members over there. And we go through it. But you need to support programs on both sides. Economic development, obviously, is important. We're looking at this week to bring the incubator. We have ours at the airport, everyone shares them in, but we're thinking about going over to the west side to make sure they get a piece of that pie as well. So, you know, they have the trails, they have obviously the river, we've got the ocean, we've got the Halifax, obviously. But you just need to spread it out. You need to make sure you're taking care of them as well. Um, and when I say them, I'm district two, so I still represent everybody, but the west side. Thank you. Deborah, same question to you. Okay, first of all, uh, I think Volusia County is actually geographically the size of Rhode Island. So we are physically, geographically, a large domain. <clears throat> we are. So, and, and naturally, our different areas, we, we're different by nature. The cultures are different. So the demands and the needs of the different areas are different. And they always will be. We call it the Palmetto Curtain. And, and we've actually built now and reinforced the green divide that Josh was referring to. And, and depending on about East West, it's about Southeast Volusia. We want our fair share. So everybody wants a voice at the table, and I think that's the biggest thing we as council people, when we come and sit in, in the chambers, is that we represent the entire county, but that's why there's district uh, members and individual members to represent our area, but do the right thing for everybody at the end. But we'll, we'll always uh, protect our turf, is what we do. Thank you. Jim, same question. It's about building relationships. I've been blessed on my peers over the last 18 years to be a representative of the Volusia League of Cities, both as a secretary, treasurer, as a vice president, now the president. And in this job, I have the ability and, and the wherewithal to go out and, and speak with all city commissioners of all 16 cities, and I have done so. And it's, it's good that we have a meeting back tomorrow, or next, 
Thursday night we have a, a, a dinner meeting in Edgeworth. We, we move these dinner meetings around so that we get to meet and mingle with all the various uh, commissioners in, in Airbury City. And this is important. It's important when you elect someone to the county council that they've already made these relationships. They already have these, these uh, this goodwill with other cities. And that's how you move things forward. You build a relationship so people understand who you are and what you stand for. And when you tell somebody you're going to do it, you do it. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Justin? Well, I think we all agree that the problem exists, and there's no real reason for me to reiterate the problems of lack of communication and, and lack of working together. What happens is, and especially in, in city councils, especially, we often have a turnover of council members. Most cities have term limits. The relationship stands, and then a couple years later, those people are gone, and you've got new people in. And we still have that stagnation, and what happens from, from a southeast Volusia perspective, coming from the north, we see the continual attention being paid to, let's say, Daytona Beach, and southeast Volusia gets the short end of the stick, or west side gets the short end of the stick. So I think what's going to bring it all together is leadership, a personality and somebody who can reach out to other people, understand we're all different and we have different desires in our region of the county, but being able to make that relationship to the point where you can bring the rest of them on board with you and say, here's, here's what we would like, and actually have success in delivering that request. Thank you. And can you? Uh, we, we are too divided, the, the palmetto curtain, as, as Deb mentioned, the divides the east from the west. I mean, I, I was talking with someone there yesterday from the west side, and you know, they, they don't want their tax dollars coming to bail out the ocean center or, or to be used for development on the east side when, when the west side of the county is being neglected. What, what kind of representation have we had? For decades, you've got the same people sitting on the county council doing nothing for the people. All they care about is winning their elections every four years. We, we, we have the highest, the second highest taxes in the state, 67 counties. We need radical change on the county council. We need new people with new ideas who can bring economic development. I, I was told by, the, um, by a state representative who, who heads the economic development committee in the, in the Florida House that this county council never reached out to her office for assistance with economic development. Budget. Volusia County's total budget this year will be more than a half billion dollars. The proposed budget for 2012-2013 is down slightly from this year's budget. Still, uh, as was just mentioned, uh, the tax rate of Volusia County is uh, among the highest in the state. Nancy, the question to you, do you see any ways to trim the county's budget more than the proposed trims are right now, given that critical needs such as road maintenance are already not being met? Well, road maintenance comes from gas tax primarily, so road maintenance really isn't under the purview of county council as much. It's mainly under the uh, transportation planning organization, and <coughs> it's dependent on gas tax, which I'm sure you all know, you're not buying as much gas as you used to if you can help it. At any rate, as far as the um, looking for ways to save money, what I've done in my business career and as an elected official was just that, find ways to save money. I recently did the math on the taxes in Ponce Inlet when I was mayor, and we dropped the taxes during the time that I was mayor, 28%. Now that's a lot of percent. So I do know how to look for ways to do things differently. I did the same thing at the hospital. I had to cut personnel and budget. I have several of my former employees here with me tonight, and I thank you very much. And um, that was the only way that we could accomplish our goal of staying in as a solvable, solvent business to provide care to the citizens of the county. That's what the county is in the business of doing, too. Thank you. Josh, same question to you. Well, I think it's an important question. Obviously, when I ran last time in 2008, I said I'd never, I would support a tax increase. My first year, reduced at 1.8 million. The second year, 22.3 million. Last year, 118,000. Would have been more, but I had to make a decision as a council member to do what's called consolidated dispatch. Now all your phone calls are going through the sheriff's office, and instead of having all these regional systems, which some people could argue one way or the other, but we did that to save you money. Your city taxes, you got a little break. What we need to look for is functional consolidation. That's the big word, the, the thing I've been working on so much, is to find areas where we can't change it based on law statutorily. But we actually find areas like dispatch where we can do it functionally. 
we can actually utilize fire services in a different way. We can utilize police services in a different way. Uh, you know, all the things I voted for, they weren't just cuts from just the savings. They were cuts from actual reoccurring costs. So in the time I've been in there, I've saved you from your property taxes, $50 million. And I'll vote again to do that. A vote for me is going to be a vote to continue lowering your taxes. Thank you. Deborah, same question to you. Can you ask it again? Because I want to hear the transportation piece. Yes. Uh, Volusia County's total budget this year will be more than a half billion dollars. The proposed budget for 2012-13 is down slightly from this year's budget. Still, the tax rate here is among the highest in the state. Do you see ways to trim the budget, the county's budget, more than it's the proposed trims are right now, given that critical needs such as road maintenance are already not being met? Well, I think that's probably one of the most important things that you just said with road, roads needs not being met and the transportation issues, because our roads and bridges are actually funded by uh, gas taxes and impact fees. And as we know, the impact fees uh, we've done away, at least the county has, with the residential piece, not the commercial piece. So, so those revenue streams are down too. Um, there's huge issues, and, and I've heard uh, several candidates say we need a transportation summit. Uh, yes, Volusia County, we need a transportation summit. We have some real issues. Looking at the budget, I think we need to, uh, we're self-funded. Uh, some, I think we need to take a look at if the government can do it better than private industry. Can there be a savings there? I don't know that we can, but it's worth taking a look at. I think we need to, our biggest expenses employ benefits, obviously, and our payroll. We need to take a look at that uh, and keep everything on the table and open, but transportation issues are huge. Thank you. Jim, same question to you. Uh, this is an easy one. The reality of it is, is that you, as, a, as an elected official sitting either on the county council or on your city commission, are the policies making body. You direct the manager to what the tax millage rate you want to achieve. You say, I either want to be a rollback, I want to be below rollback, I want to be above rollback. I've never wanted to be above any of those things, but I've always fought for lower taxes. And in my 18 years, you can go back and look at, the, at my history of voting record and see that I voted to reduce taxes. In fact, New Smyrna's taxes we're going from $55 million this past fiscal year to $44 million this coming year. And if you call it a reduction, we, re re we reduced some of our employees and we've also cut corners on some, some eight items that we didn't need. So the reality of it is we have to be the ones to set the direction. We have to be the ones to tell Emmanuel where to go. And then he's going to come back with options. And that's when the council will sit down and determine which option we want, which option we don't want. The reality of it is, is that we can get there we shouldn't be the second or third highest county in, in, the, in the state of Florida with the lowest, uh, lowest paying job that we have. We need to do something. Thank you. Thank you. Justin, same question to you. Um, you know, I think most, most everybody up here agrees that there's, there's always ways to find uh, places to cut. I think it starts with reevaluating every enterprise, every expense, every line item on the budget year after year, similar to what all cities and all counties have done since 2007, 2008. Um, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that we have to cut. We, we look and see where we're spending it. And we continue to look at those places where we're spending it. We evaluate, um, you know, is that a necessity? Is that something that people really want? Is that something we can get rid of? Or maybe we can still provide the service, but in a totally different way. Example being the dispatch. Um, so we just keep looking, looking for ways to cut. One of the things that we want to be careful of is though, as we cut the county budget, the city budget, like the dispatch for example, I know that like in our city we're supposed to have a $200,000 this year savings, but yet we're having the hardest time going to roll back. Where'd that money go? Thank you. Ken, same question to you. 42% of the county's budget goes to the sheriff's department. We understand that there is a lot of overtime being paid to our deputies, which may not be safe because they're working a lot of overtime. I want to look at the overall budget. I want to look at the Sheriff's Department. I, I, would, I worked for the Sheriff's Department many years ago. And those of you who were here in 1998 remember the fires. I was a dispatcher in the Sheriff's Office. And uh, because of that, I got a we got some free tickets to Disney because we, we worked so hard during those fires. So my family enjoyed Disney for a, for a month every weekend. But that was a good part of it. 
But uh, yeah, we, we need to look at top management on the county. Um, we have a manager and we got two, man two assistant managers. We got a lot of people making six figures on the county council. And yet we got to hire consultants to, to tell us what to do every time. When we got high paid people being paid by taxpayers and elected officials who are elected to make decisions. And we got to find it. We are known as the tongue, tongue of consultants. Thank you. Nancy, you have one minute to respond. Uh, I'd like to touch on the transportation some. I, I agree that transportation is going to be a huge issue in the future, especially as Sunrail approaches Volusia County. We uh, do need to have a, a method of getting people over to Daytona Beach. I know the Transportation Planning Organization is planning to do an analysis of the best methods to use for that, in the short term at least. Uh, obviously the ultimate goal would be to get it to come all the way to Daytona Beach, my line, preferably the airport area. Um, I'm a big believer in Votran and public transportation for the people who are underserved and under under economically funded, shall we say. They can't afford their own transportation. So Votran is very important to this county in order to help people get to work so they're actually productive members of society that the county is helping along. Uh, fire, uh, just a, briefly, the fires of 98, I distinctly remember because that was my first year as a volunteer firefighter. And because we weren't combat trained yet, my husband and I were left in charge of the town, and we were scared to death we were going to get called. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, the next question goes to Josh. Volusia County has had very little success in recent years recruiting new business or industry. There's also a significant rumbling behind the scenes that the county and Team Volusia, the Team Volusia effort, have not been supportive of each other. What should the county do to improve its economic development efforts? Well, there's a bunch of different things that can be done. You know, obviously, with Team Volusia that came up as a couple years ago, um, it makes a lot of sense. I think it's a good thing. I actually support it. Uh, recently, and, and no one knows this yet because it hasn't been out, uh, I met with a group. But a lot of times, as a council member, you, you're brought in to kind of, I don't want to say cheerleader, but kind of say, hey, as an elected official, we'd love to have you. This, you know, all these good things. I uh, met with this gentleman, and it's going to be a thousand jobs, and they, they're going to do it, most likely, as long as the company wants to push forward his recommendation as an employee, and uh, he's a high up, that we should do it. Um, one of the reasons he wanted to do it, it was the people. So as long as we focus on the people, I think that's an important aspect of it. Everything else seems to work out. Now, if we get in these fights and we say, okay, you know, CRAs, and that's when you talk about cities' economic development, when you hear CRA, that's the tool the cities are using. I'm not very pro CRA, I have a hard time with them just because some of the things that go on. But we need to focus on the good things we have. There are a lot of, there are places opening, there are jobs starting, there are businesses moving in. Could there be more? Absolutely. But the main thing for me, I'm tired of the theft. I'm tired of stealing business from New York because the weather's better down here. The, the biggest one, our initiative has been the incubator program. We brought it in during the time I was in. It's important because you're growing businesses. You have small businesses that are here. You're giving them the resources so they can grow here. They're not stealing. You're growing some of your own. There are neighbors, there are friends, there are family. A lot of people are there, so why not have them expand and they stay? Their chances of them staying are significantly higher and it's a better return on the dollar. So a lot of other things involved on top of it. Thank you. Deb, same question to you. Well, I'm hoping that industry is related to aeronautics and aviation. See, there you go, there's my answer. And I think that's the answer and the golden lining for Volusia County. I think we're poised at the right time, at the right place with Space Florida, what's happened with Embry Air uh, down in Melbourne with our airport. Daytona Beach Airport is listed in, space, in Spaceport, Florida, the, the National Corridor from Cape Canaveral to Jacksonville as an emerging SIS, Strategic Intermodal System Airport. I think we need to separate our, our um, airport advisory from economic development and here's what we do, we create an aviation authority. The time has come, not a taxing authority, a governing authority, and let's brand for aeronautics and aviation, and that's gonna put Volusia County, our people high paying, high tech jobs, and give us some real stability. Thank you. Jim, same question. You know, I certainly don't agree with, uh, I mean, I certainly agree with my uh, counterpart here about uh, the growth of uh, these nice uh, engineering type job. My son's a professional engineer and I know that he enjoys his job. He ha happens to work up in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. 
Let me just say what we've done in New Smyrna Beach, and, and, and I can only go from my experience. What we have done is we've looked at what Lucia County did. They gave impact fee waivers to residents. New Smyrna Beach did not, but we gave impact fee waivers to, to businesses, commercials, and industrial. And right now, we've got three brand new businesses being built right out on State Road 44. We just had a new Super Walmart open in less than a year ago. So from my point of view, that those impact waivers are working. And I would certainly look at it from Volusia County's perspective and say, what can we do? Now, I understand some of these impact fees go to store road construction. But if you don't have the business people here, if you don't have businesses here, if you don't have jobs, we don't need any roads. We have bicycles and horses. Thank you. Thank you. Justin, same question. Did you want to repeat the question? We talked about Team Volusia, and now we're talking about... Sure. Volusia County has had very little success in recent years recruiting new business or industry. There's also significant rumbling behind the scenes that the county and Team Volusia have not been supportive of each other. What should the county do to improve its economic development efforts? Okay, so over the last five or six years, everybody, including cities, counties, states, the national, the federal government, we've all been forced to think out of the box in terms of economic development. Things are not what they used to be. And so we've made efforts, and I say we, all of us, business owners, government, to try to change things. Team Volusia was born out of that, that brainchild of partnering with government and, and solid hometown businesses to try to bring in those businesses. Well, what have we gotten out of it? It's been slow, but that's the economy. But we have generated some, some really bright things on the horizon. Every riddle has great aviation and engineering opportunities, but Ember Riddle's in the education business. How many teaching positions and how many administrative positions have come from these little tiny programs that Ember Riddle will continue to grow on in terms of the education? The other thing we need to look at is the baby boomers are here. Medical demand is on the rise, and we need to focus more on serving that medical demand. Thank you. Ken, same question to you. Team Volusia created four jobs in a year. All of them worked for Team Volusia. And they created a website. I tried to meet with the last executive director who was hired, and she was too busy to meet with me because I had two uh, manufacturers who wanted to locate here. We have since lost one. Um, I did meet with the acting executive director, and uh, she was very helpful, took me to um, we went to the, the, um, the UCF uh, incubator. We met with, she met with, uh, with some other people with me. Embry Riddle, I support them. I'm a pilot, I own an aviation business. I have an agreement with Embry Riddle where we, we hire some of their staff, we offer internships to their students. They have provided 3,000 engineers who work at Boeing. You know, Volusia County has, it has a strong aviation base and we need to build on that. Uh, the, the Lieutenant Governor of Florida recently, uh, she endorsed my candidacy for this, for this position, for the County Council. And uh, she referred to my aviation background because Volusia County is strong in aviation, and I want to go there with that. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy, same question. Well, I do agree that the economy has, has been weak in the, in the world, <laughs> certainly in our country, so that's part of the reason that business has been a little weak in the county, but the county's really not, their, their primary focus is not economic development. They should be sponsoring economic development by experts who do know what they're doing in that field. And that's what these other entities are for, is they're the team volutions and, and the various boards that are actually specializing in a particular industry. We do have a lot of industries here that can bring us jobs. Aviation is one of them, but we, have, we do have a strong medical community there are businesses outside the land that specialize in medical equipment and, and supplies. So there are different, different directions we can go in that all have to be coordinated in order to bring success. I am a fan of the business incubators. I think they're a great idea. I am also very strong on keeping jobs local. We have five colleges and we have academies on all of the high schools that specialize in various very very narrow uh, training programs that the kids can come out and actually find employment in. 
Thank you. And Josh, you've got a final minute on that question. Thank you. Uh, you know, obviously everybody talks about bringing the outside jobs in, and it depends on what the jobs are. But my focus, and one of the big things for me, has been to focus on the businesses that are here. That's why I sponsored a local preference. I was tired of seeing jobs and bids going to companies outside of our county. I was getting fed up, and I needed a way to make sure that the local companies got their fair share and the jobs would stay here because the money circulates through us. Those are our friends. Those are our jobs. Those are our kids. That's the reason they stay. So that's why I support a local preference, and it was passed. There's a lot of things we need to do, and it's, you know, it's time consuming, but and it's, you don't have to do it. Some council members don't engage as much. But one of the things I do, I plot every time a selection committee comes up, I volunteer. I don't have to do it, but I do it. You know why? Because as a council member, I can bring in local knowledge as a, a criteria for a company. So when you have six people bidding for a job and they're from 200 miles away and you have one from Daytona Beach, I can bring in local knowledge. And I get on there and I do it every time because I think it's important to keep the money in the house, keep it circulating through our community because those are our friends and family. Thank you. We have one final question in this part of the, this portion of the debate and it goes to it run till nine or 10 o'clock at night. It doesn't work. It's not good for the for the people that have to sit in the audience. It isn't good for staff to sit there all day. And it certainly isn't good for the elected officials who have to make these tough decisions. I, I've been on a commission for 18 years. And the reality of it is you start the meeting and you don't run it for more than four hours at the most. Because by that time, everybody's tired. Everybody's worn out. And, and, and the argument is, well, we can't get our work done. Well, you can get your work done. You can determine what goes on that agenda. And if you have to meet one week, one night a week, every week of the month, you get it done. But then you allow at least the people who you represent to have a voice, to have a say in their own government. And that's what we're here for. It is representative government, but we like to hear. I'm out on the streets every morning, and I love to hear it from the government. So I need the limousine as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Justin, same question. Well, I might not be as tough as Mr. Hathaway. I remember my days in school, and uh, I liked when the teachers cut you a little slack, and, that, and that's probably what I would be more inclined to do. I'd go with a B, um, and it'd be tough to get an A out of me from anybody. But, you know, I have, I have never had a problem with approachability with the current council. Um, I have every one of their cell phones in my cell phone now, and they always answer the phone or call me right back. Um, I do have some issues with county management. Um, county management seems to sometimes run astray of the council's lead, and we've experienced that. But I have had good results in, in reaching out to council members to bring that back into focus, at least how it pertains to my city, Edgewater. Um, they've done a pretty good job with the budget considering the tremendous cuts in revenue over a very short period of time. And I think we're going to be faced with that for several more years going into it. So I mean, all in all, I think those categories are, are not too bad. I think the disconnect between the areas of the, of the county are a real problem. Thank you. Ken, same question to you. Yes, uh, I would give them a big F. <laughs> there are questions about the Sunshine Law that uh, were broken. The arrogance of county council members who forget that they work for us, we don't work for them. We elected them in office and we will take them out of office. We have the highest taxes, the lowest median salary. We've had scandals on the, on the beach patrol. Issues on the, on the advertising boards. We are in massive debt. Now we, we're going to be faced with uh, the sun rail, which will throw this, this county into receivership. The, the state is going to run it for seven years, and then it'll be up to the county, county, the county to fund it. And our taxes will go up because we, we decided to bring Sunrail, which we don't have the ridership for in this area. And it's going to run us to the ground. We we'll probably have to leave Volusia County. So I think. Thank you. Nancy, same question. Ken's a tough reader. <laughs> I'll give them a C plus. Uh, my biggest complaint really has been communication to the citizens. I mean, obviously, if you're an elected official, you have a different avenue. But some of the things that have happened that just leave me wondering, I, I've actually, and when I've been meeting with other cities, I hear that there is a decrease in the working relationship between the cities and the county. And that had improved significantly while I was in office in Ponce Inlet. And it's a shame to hear that, and I don't think it's productive. 
I also think that there are issues like what's happening now with the Doris Sleeper Preserve that make it clear that there is someone at the county that doesn't understand that the really there needs to be better communication with the citizens about some of these issues that are going to affect so many people. I don't want to rehash all the other things that have been said, so I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Josh, same question to you. Well, obviously, since there's other council members in the room, I'm giving it an A. <laughs> uh, so fast. You know, a lot of people, you know, this question is difficult in the sense of you're grading a council. There's a lot of times I've been on the losing side of votes and I've fought hard for it. For example, Doris Lieber, that just came up. I made a motion to stop it. Well, guess what? I lost. You know, so it's hard to grade an entire council. You have to look at the body of work that they've done. So I think it's a little unfair to do it in that manner. Uh, but there's some great things that have happened. Reducing the budget significantly, saving money, that's a big deal. Sure, the meetings are 12 hours a day, but I've never heard someone give a bad grade for a group of people that sit in a 12-hour meeting to talk about it at length. If someone wants to give me a better grade to shorten a meeting and talk less and not engage, and I can go surfing and do something and spend time with my family and my kids, sure I'd love to do it. But I spend the time, and I should get an A for doing that. You have to look at everybody individually as well as the, the entire body of work, and I think that's important. Thank you. And, uh, Dan, you have one minute to reconsider your grade. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I'll hold right where I am. But the, the communication issue is, and, and I think Nancy's right, it depends on which side of the table you're on at the time and, and how you're going to respond to that. But I would like to see the communication and, and possibly even alternating meetings ever once in a while into different parts of the community. And communication, this is, this is one thing I've noticed, and Josh, I might be wrong, but the county council meetings I've listened to and said, and sometimes I wonder if the county manager doesn't do as much talking and dialogue as the council members, and it's their meeting, and, and you, you just wonder. So I've got to see what right now, maybe we'll get up to a C plus or a B. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we're now at the point of the debate where candidates have an opportunity to ask questions of their fellow candidates. We'll call it the lightning round. Here's how it'll work. Each candidate gets up to 30 seconds to ask a question. You don't need to take that long, but you have that long. To ask a question of a fellow candidate in their district. In other words, District 2 asks District 2, District 3 asks District 3. The question's completely up to the candidate asking, and it's up to the candidate to decide who will receive the question. The candidate who receives the question will have a minute and 30 seconds to answer. Then the candidate who asked the original question will have 30 seconds to respond to that answer. We're going to jump from district to district for this portion of the debate. So here we go. And Kent, you get the first question. And let me just, before we go there, each person gets one question, and then we move on to the next part of the debate. Kent, the floor is yours. So I ask anyone, any one of the other that's right. Nancy, can you tell us what, what side you stand on with the um, issue in Ponce Inlet, uh, with that uh, Pasetta issue? Uh, are you on the side of the developers or the, or the citizens? I'm on the side of property rights. The developer had the rights yeah. to do what they asked us for. And yeah. the citizens put a petition in place to stop one part of that development. That petition was successful. I voted accordingly. And that is not what caused the lawsuit. There has been a great deal of misinformation surrounding that. But if you'll read the judgment, in two different places, the judge refers to after November of 2008. In other words, after I was out of office is when the damages occurred. And the new council was the council that voted for all the things that created the damages. They did not sue until 2010. They would not have waited that long if it was my actions that had created the problem. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to bring that up. Thank you. And uh, can you have 30 seconds to respond? Yeah, I just wanted to clear the air. I've been uh, getting a lot of emails from citizens in Ponce and Let who are very concerned that uh, their former mayor who's running for the, the county council. Um, and this issue happened there. And uh, if, if, if the company wins the, the, the lawsuit, uh, the town of Ponce and Let may go bankrupt. Uh, and it's a, it's a big issue, it's a big concern. I understand the county manager also lives in Ponce Inlet and his home is up for sale. So he doesn't, uh, he doesn't send the right message. Okay, thank you. The next question uh, to be asked is uh, Deborah. Thank you. Um, 
we talked about, I'm going to ask you, Jim, to yeah, let, you, let you clarify the record and set the record straight. Uh, we talked about economic development and economic generators. Can you still explain to this day why you voted consistently against the first major economic de uh, engine in New Smyrna, the Hampton Inn, all the times? And what was your rationale for that? Sure, I don't know that that really embodies the question that we're looking for for County Council candidates, but I'll be happy to answer that. I was born in New Smyrna Beach. My family built a grocery store on Fly Avenue, which I, which they operated and I operated. I grew up in that grocery business, stayed here until I was 37 years of age, knew every aspect about Fly Avenue, served on the, on the, uh, on the back then it was called the Fly Avenue with, uh, Merchants Association, served on that for many years while I was, was a merchant over there, and uh, I just did not think that, that hotel fit in that location. I thought it was way too large for that location. I spoke with the, with the developer. I wanted him to move the location to, to any other side. The AOB site was available. We'd love to see it go on there, but see it even on the ocean. I just didn't feel that that was the right fit for this particular community. You know, you can argue the point that that's against uh, economic development. It just isn't. You have to stand up for the citizens that have homes around where we put a commercial structure and understand that, that commercial structure needs to blend in with the, the homes that are there as well because they have rights. Everybody has rights and you have to balance those rights. And yeah, I'm proud of the fact that I was I stood up for those home homeowners having been a, a businessman on that street. And at the end of the day, Mr. Swinter and I shook hands. I well I wish him well. He, his building is being almost finished. I hope he is very successful. And in fact, Mr. Swinter is a contributor of mine to my campaign. Thank you. And Deborah, you have 30 seconds to respond. Well, I think it does go to, um, I think, a, a philosophy of government, if you will. Uh, because it, it, we're a tourist town. New Smyrna is a tourist town. It is an economic generator. Put a lot of people to work. It will bring tourists to the area. So I, I think it is, it's a good question. But thanks for answering, Jim. Thank you. Nancy? You have the next question. Yes. Yeah, I guess Ken and I both decided to ask each other <laughs> because I think I, I already know enough about Tom. If you are unsuccessful in your bid, <laughs> if you're unsuccessful in your bid for this seat, one what what one issue would you like to see the candidate who is elected represent for your community? Well, I would, I would like to see the candidate that I vote for, or who wins, uh, gets involved in the community. I, I voted for Josh four years ago. I never heard from him after that. Um, <laughs> never had a community meeting that I was attended to, um, that, I, that I was invited to. So I, I want to see our elected officials involved, get to know people. Uh, I've had, I met people in Pond Simlet. They said, um, Frank Bruno lives down here. Josh Wagner is our representative, and we never see them in Ponce Inlet. So I, I think, as, as elected officials, we need we can't only think that uh, you know people put us in office and we're there and we become arrogant and people go to the meeting and we use all kinds of remarks against citizens that come there. We got to be remind, reminded that we work for the people. The people are the ones who brought us in there and. Uh, we, it's, it's, it's servanthood. That's why you call it public servants. We are not lord and masters over the people. So whoever is elected, and, and I trust that you would elect me, because I believe I'm the best choice for District 2. Whoever is elected, that, uh, that you would serve the people and make sure that the people get what they want, that people are accessible to you, and, uh, and we move this county forward. We gotta, we gotta move from the second highest taxes and one of the lowest, uh, median salaries in the state of Florida. We, we gotta do better than this. I can't possibly do worse, so thank you. Thank you. Nancy, you have 30 seconds to respond to him. Okay, that's easy actually. Um, I'm glad that you didn't mention me as the citizens saying they don't ever see me because that's one of the things I do pride myself on is community involvement. Nevertheless, Frank does too, and he said he, they said they don't see him. Um, I do live there, and I've lived there for 14 years, and I started off, as I mentioned earlier, my very first year I became a volunteer firefighter because I believe in community involvement. I believe in giving back to the people that I work and serve with. 
and I have been continuously involved for the entire 14 years in my community. I'm an elk. I am the president, I'm currently the president of the Pine Sand Alliance Club. I'm on the member of the Crime Stoppers Board of Northeast Florida, and I'm the president-elect of that. I'm on several, uh, two Volusia County boards, Historic Preservation and the- Nancy. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, the next question goes to Jim. Now oh, I guess turn out fair play. Ms. Denny's? <laughs> on your website, at the home page, your first sentence is, and I quote, the county must strive to provide government services without increasing the burden on residents, end quote. With that statement in mind, how will you find ways to pay for the rising cost of transportation, including Voter Trans Sunrail and the other improvements as alluded to in your response to the League of Women Voters, without further burdening our residents with increased taxes or fees? Well, if I could do that, I should be governor of the state of Florida. Here's the thing. Talking about services, you, you go into the service part of it, right? The services. When I vice chaired the Children and Families Advisory Board, a lot of our agencies that uh, that populate and that, that we fund the county funds, we have something called match dollars. For example, the Early Learning Coalition, we draw down 16 to 1 federal dollars for every match dollar we get from the county. 16 to 1. In an RFP process, the Children and Family advisory board when they put out some of the new proposals there were several funding options not on the table and there was over four hundred thousand dollars in match dollars local match dollars left on the table you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out we're drawing down some dollars those are the things that i'd like to look at for not increasing burden increasing services and knowing how to work within the system to uh to serve all of our citizens as far as sunrail goes um, I was a part of that. I don't know that I would have voted for that because pretty soon it's going to take up at least one third of our transport. I think year 2020, it's going to take up one third of the transportation dollars in Volusia County. And I said it before, it's going to be a train wreck waiting to happen. That's a huge transportation is going to be a huge issue. You've heard it. Watch it. I don't care who's in the county council sitting up here. Transportation Volusia County is going to be a huge issue for us to have to deal with. Thank you. And Jen, you have 30 seconds to respond. Truly the only way that you can make this thing work is to grow the county. And I'm not talking about the government of the county. I'm talking about growing the businesses, growing the industry in this county. And you've got to have the leadership at the helm to direct the manager as to where you're going to take this ship. And uh, right now, we're kind of foundering out there. We need some good management to move forward. We need to see what we can do to alleviate and, and, and to me it, it makes little sense if you're not going to tie sunrail to the east coast thank you thank you and the next question is yours josh either of mine asked me so i'm kind of worried <laughs> yeah well I'll, I'll ask ken and this is a tough one ken. i apologize in, in advance you know a lot of discussion i know we've heated conversations and I think even the news journal sometimes will say, I, you know, they're write-ins. They say, uh, someone wrote a letter to the editor, how accessible I am, and I really try to make myself accessible. So my tough question for you is, will you please go to lunch with me tomorrow? <laughs> I will pay, and I will give an option, or we can go have a beer. You pick. Either one, I would like to discuss the issues that you please. Since I'm the city council member. I'll take it up on August 15th. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Is, is that your full answer? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll invite Josh to come and hand over to me on August 15th. <laughs> Not officially till, uh, till January. But, uh, okay. And he can bring all his supporters with their signs. I'll welcome them all. But, uh, you know, yes, even um, it's better half back there waiting. <laughs> But good. Um, it's, I, this is this is what democracy is about. I've seen governments change by bullets, and I've seen it change by ballots. And I enjoy this process. I mean, only in America this could happen. As an immigrant coming to this country, only in America, this speaks about the greatness of this country. Only in America, my son can proudly wear the uniform and go to war three, on three occasions, so that we can enjoy the freedom that we have. I love this country. I stood up, I put my life on the line for my country, and I'll do it for America also. 
Thank you. Thank you. And Josh? And, and I appreciate that. Obviously, a son going to war, that's, you know, you are. So that's, I have a son, and I can understand that being difficult. But, you know, a lot of times, and the reason I ask the question, Ken, is just sometimes people, you know, when it gets personal, and it gets hard, I love staying on the issues. And, and what I do and what I've done over the last few years is when there is something that's contested and it gets heated, I like to reach out to them and go have a beer or go to lunch. Because I find that if you do that, they're a person. You know, my mom's here, and my wife's here. I mean, we all live here, and we all need to respect that. And that's not just for, for me and Ken or the other candidates. It's respectful to each other. And if we're going to move forward as a county and really grow and do good things, we got to work together. We live together. Let's be friends. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we've come to the time uh, where everybody has two minutes to give a call. Oh, my God. I forgot one of the candidates. <laughs> Let me just defer my question to Josh. Josh, if you get elected, I will expect a phone call from you. I always expect a phone call. Go ahead. You, you have the... I'll give it to Ms. Denny. And I don't mean this to be any, any shape or form negative, but we did talk about the divide between the council, between the county, the north side, the east side, and the west side. Your history on the school board found you on the bottom end of a 3-2 vote oftentimes. Um, you stirred things up, but you oftentimes were on the losing side and were never able to bring your ideas. I shouldn't say never, but oftentimes what you went there to represent failed. Will that happen again if you get elected? Will you go to this council when all of us in Southeast Volusia are looking to you to bring together this council? Will that happen again? First of all, thank you for looking to me to bring Southeast Volusia together, because I, I will absolutely do that. And, and I think I want to challenge your definition of fail. When I campaigned in 1994, I campaigned countywide on one platform, and that's to do away with multi-track year-round school. How many of you remember that? Our county was divided. When I, and I was chairing the education committee at the Chamber of Commerce on the board of directors, and we started looking at this, and we started realizing that we were hemorrhaging millions of dollars in Volusia County schools we didn't have FCAP, and we had CTBS. CTBS scores were plummeting. I ran for school board because they were using Southeast Volusia as a guinea pig on a different track, totally separate from the balance of the county. And if you had a child in elementary and middle school and one in high school, you never vacationed together. And our teachers were never together with their children. As a minority member, and you're right, it's a nonpartisan race, but I'll tell you why it happened, because this is why. I was an elected Republican on a Democrat-controlled school board, but within 18 months, we reunited Volusia County school system to a unified traditional calendar that we have now. We stopped the hemorrhaging, we increased test scores, and some of those schools we found was costing us one and a half million dollars per school to implement this failed policy. So I don't know what your definition of failure is, but thank you, because I'm gonna do the same thing for you in Volusia County Council. I have the courage of my convictions, I'll ask you tough questions, and I'll get it done. Thank you. And Justin, you have 30 seconds to respond. So, so, so you got elected, you, were, you had one issue, and, and so that one issue you settled it made you a one issue candidate. Is that right? <laughs> Would that be okay with you? I suppose. I mean, that's what you said. You, you ran on a platform of one issue, you got it done, and that was what you ran for. I don't know that there's any rebuttal. That's what you said. I didn't ever said I was a one issue kid. You challenged me as a failure. I told you. No, I you asked you. Actually, you didn't answer the question. I asked you, would you, would you bring that leadership <laughs> together? Because what I asked you is, would you continue to do that? How, how about being on the bottom end of an issue, on the bottom end of a vote, how is that leadership? That's the question I asked. Okay. It wasn't, a, it wasn't the bottom end. I, I, well, okay, I'm not going to That one issue. Yet. One issue yeah, in four years. There's a ton of issues. Um, let, uh, candidates, uh, we're going to enter the uh, closing statement portion of it. You certainly are welcome to uh, address this issue again if you decide. Okay. You're first. And, and if you would like to, uh, to stand during your closing statement.
statements, you're certainly welcome to if you'd like. Actually, I, think I would like to stretch my eggs. First of all, Thank you. Would we have two minutes? Two yes. Minutes, two minutes. First of all, thank you for thank you for listening to us. As you can tell, we have some. There you go. We have some seasoned uh, candidates up here. Whoever represents you in District Two or Three or the balance of the county going forward, you need to know we have to tackle some serious issues. Transportation. We have two bridges. We didn't even talk about real transportation and infrastructure issues. Two bridges in Daytona Beach that need to be repaired. We don't have the gas taxes. We don't have the impact fees to pay for. They have. We have to handle that in Volusia County. Sunrail. We don't have the full impact of that. I have the courage of my convictions. I have the business and management and administration background. I've chaired. I vice chaired many organizations. I will be your voice for Volusia County and take the courage of my convictions, work with our council. That's one thing I did as chair of the Early Learning Coalition. When the state laws changed, you know what we did? We built collaboration in Flagler and Volusia County and we brought all stakeholders together. We had meetings of all stakeholders and we did a lot of implementing from the state level that could have torn our area apart. And I saved over 70 jobs in Volusia County because when I took over, the central agency was an RFP process request for proposal and we were on the verge of losing some of our agencies, nonprofit agencies, not just outside Volusia County, but outside the state of Florida, somebody that had better reserves than we did. I know the questions, Governor Bush, saw my qualifications, he appointed me, Governor Crist reappointed me, the voters have elected me, I have served many times, many places, and I hope to be your voice in the County Council for Lucia County District 3. Thank you for coming, thank you all. Clap again everybody. No, I appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Obviously, you know, running for office is a, uh, it's one of the most interesting things you'll ever do. And it's honestly interesting, rerunning for office. Uh, you know, I've had a lot of support, you know, that's, um, you know, I thought was, uh, I appreciate it. And then there's some people, you know, over time, over four years, uh, some people are upset with you. And you see, you know, they, they're not happy. But for the most part, even some of the people that may not have been on the right side of an issue or wrong side, depending on how you look at it, have come around and supported me. I'm an open guy. I'm accessible. Uh, my wife probably hates me for it because I'm up until 1 o'clock in the morning emailing and sometimes at 4 o'clock in the morning emailing. If you can say, you know, if someone wants to say something about me, that's definitely, you, you can't take away the accessibility because believe me, I'm there. Uh, you know, I've enjoyed it. I'd like to be your county councilman again in District 2. Uh, you know, some people say, are you insane? You know, I think everybody up here, there's something, a little something wrong with us that we want to do it, but in a good way. You know, I was at church the other day and they said, hey, you know, the, it was really neat. I was uh, meeting with the church and they said, we need someone stubborn, but stubborn in a good way. And my wife will tell you, I'm a very stubborn guy, but in a good way. I think that's important because you need to have convictions. You need to be able to go in there and say, hey, this is important. Man, you know, sometimes management, they don't want to do it. But you need to have that and stay strong. And sometimes you're going to show up in the paper and, and you're a little animated and a little heated, but that's what you're asked to do. You know, and you do it. And you know people are going to be mad at you sometimes. And it comes around. You can look at some other people There's on their side of the, uh, you know, the finance sheet. And that's okay because they didn't like what I did. But I did it because that's what you voted me to do. You know, and I knew at the end of the day when I got a phone call from somebody saying, hey, we helped put you in office. Where were you on this vote? You know, what I say to them is, I wanted to say, do you want your money back? But I didn't. I simply <laughs> said, you know, I was, I was asked to do this job. I wasn't asked to make friends. I mean, when I started, I was kind of a, you know, to be loved kind of personality, but then you, you have to change that because it will eat you inside. But I really like it. I'd love to have your support again, and I appreciate everybody coming out and supporting me tonight. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to introduce me, so Nancy Epps is next. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep the feedback down here. Well, I do thank everybody for coming out tonight. It's a big investment of your time, I realize, but this proves the involvement of the community. And I hope I was able to demonstrate to you that I am involved back with you, that I have spent the past 14 years especially, and many years before that, but for a solid 14 years now, there has not been a minute when I have not been involved in volunteerism and or being an elected official. 
as an elected official, one of the things I was well known for was my accessibility also. I was up till all hours of the day and night, answering emails, making phone calls. I attended the dances, the openings, the all kinds of activities in the town. And also, I was a member of the Volusia League of Cities and the Volusia Council of Governments. I was on the um, executive board of Volusia Council of Governments. So I also had the opportunity to do a lot of networking across the county and even regionally to some extent because we were developing the maps that are now the blueprint for the conservation corridor that was referred to earlier that unfortunately has increased the divide a little bit but is, is super critical to our future water supply and also to the, uh, the animals that live in our area. They have to have a corridor in which they can still live or you'll see more and more stories of bears and other animals being in our neighborhoods. So all of those things have given me the experience and the qualifications, along with my business background. I did not mention earlier I have a master's degree in business administration, and I also ran the laboratory at the hospital for uh, 10 years. Before that, I was manager in some other locations. So I do have a lot of business background. Having been a councilman, council member and a mayor, I was used to doing uh, government budgets, which are somewhat different from other businesses. There are rules that you need to know about government budgets that having the history and the experience are helpful for. So I hope that those of you who live in District 2 will remember my name. I'll be in the middle. It's the, the second shortest name. <laughs> and I died. <laughs> it's time to stop. Thank you. Well, what should I say? I'm not a career politician and I'm not an attorney. You know? You know we got our fill of them in, in D.C. and look how it's working out for us. <laughs> I am a small business owner. I've lived in Volusia County for 18 years. I'm married to my first wife of over 30 years. We have three children. I'm heterosexual. Um, my son is a... I got a son and two daughters. I want to be your next representative for County Council District 2. I, I'm a bus I have a business background. I run a business here in town in, in Daytona Beach at the airport. And uh, we have trained pilots from over 25 countries right here in Volusia County. I have connections internationally. In fact, I just had some people that left uh, that were here from Moscow, Russia. Uh, I have someone coming in from the Czech Republic next week. We, we've trained pilots from 25 different countries. And we, we want to bring that experience to the county council. I want to do that. Let me get away from the mic. But um, um, Josh is my son's age, so if he thinks I'm giving him a hard time, I'm not. Um, I just wouldn't hold his youth and inexperience against him. <laughs> but remember, I cannot be first on the ballot. You'll be first on my list. And remember, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, go to the polls and vote for me. <laughs> I'm Ken Ali and I approve this message. Thank you. Uh, Justin. Okay. I promise I won't quote any lines from the 80s about youth and experience. Because this election's about the future, okay? The old ways of doing things are gone. And the truth of the matter is, the younger folks in the crowd are going to be here further down the road. And I think it's important that I think it's important that we elect people that have a vision of the future and have the ability to reach out to other people and bring that vision to reality. My service in Edgewater has shown that I have the ability to do that, and as your county councilman, I promise you I'll continue to do that. Thank you. It's Justin Kennedy, south of Port Orange. You're in my district. Barn hollering fashion. Here, yeah. Last but not least, I am one of the most blessed individuals 
to live in Southeast Volusia, to be born here, to be raised here, to be able to, to own a business here, to be able to raise my family here, to have three of my children living within 45 minutes of me. Two of them actually live in, in Southeast Volusia County. Thank you for, for, for Southeast Volusia for supporting my business. Thank you to Southeast Volusia for allowing me to represent New Smyrna Beach. Thank you, Southeast Volusia, for allowing me to be in your face for 20 years. I'm proud of it. Um, I, 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 I like this experience that I'm taking with me. I'm not forced to leave the city of New Smyrna Beach, but I chose to do so as far as being the representative. I think I have something to take to the land. I think I have some common sense. I know I have leadership abilities, and I have that little businessman's attitude that I can get it done, and I will get it done. And I just want to say thank you to all of you, and thank you to the New Journal for putting on this great uh, forum tonight. I mean, I'm, a, I'm so impressed that you all came out tonight. You spent over an hour, almost two hours of your time here tonight listening to us. Thank you for doing that. Remember, the greatest right that you have is the right to vote. Don't ever forget about that, and please exercise that right to vote. I know everyone in this room will do so, but make sure you tell your friends, make sure you tell your your enemies, make sure you tell everyone around you to go to the polls and vote. And please remember, if you think I'm the best candidate, vote for Jim Hathaway, District 3. Thank you all very much. Is this time? Okay. Uh, this concludes tonight's debate, and I want to again thank the city of New Smyrna Beach for allowing us to use the Brandon Center. I want to thank Daytona State College for their co-sponsorship, and I want to thank everyone here for attending. Most of all, let's get the candidates a final round of applause.